This is an updated guide for the Xernox nuclear reactor which probably is the first reactor you will make in this mod for producing power. 3 years ago I made a video for this reactor but it is vastly outdated now a lot of things have changed. So in this video I will cover how to run this reactor in the early game. You will find useful timestamps in the description. Also I will briefly go over a bedrock ore processing setup which will give you things you need in order to run this continuously. So without any further ado let's get straight into it. Let's start with the crafting recipe. So this is not exactly an expensive reactor to make as you can craft it after uh, completing oil process. So you'll need a ton of steel for it along with that boron which will be obtained from rare earth metals, graphite will be obtained from coal, rubber can be obtained from petroleum byproducts and sulfur. Then concrete is pretty easy along with steel and some integrated circuit which once again is not very expensive to craft. So whole and whole this entire reactor is not very difficult to make. You will just need a lot of zirconium in order to make the fuel rods for it. So once crafted it's gonna look something like this. Pretty cool design with Xernox written in the front. And in the GUI you will have total 24 slots for fuel rods. Now carbon dioxide is going to be the medium which transfers heat from the core to the water as written here. It will also need some balancing of pressure. And we will need to fill it with carbon dioxide and water. So you have gauges for the temperature and pressure. A valve to vent out carbon dioxide which we'll take a look later on and some gauges to display the levels of carbon dioxide and water. So first thing that I'm gonna do here is fill up the reactor with carbon dioxide as it's pretty important to do that. So for it right now I'm using an infinite barrel but you can look up the crafting recipes for carbon dioxide. Once full the gauge will actually display that that we have 16,000 millibuckets of CO2 and with the valve, if you click on it, you can vent out carbon dioxide. This will reduce the temperature, oh sorry, the pressure, which will in, uh, increase the temperature. It's a balancing game here. So once it is full of carbon dioxide, and by the way, yeah, here's the crafting recipes, different crafting recipes for CO2, not very difficult to craft. You can directly get it from natural gas. So with that, we have filled it with carbon dioxide. Also, it produces super dense steam now, so we will need three turbines. I'm going to use the industrial steam turbine for the 100% efficiency, as this reactor doesn't really produce a lot of power, especially in the early game when we don't have a lot of fuel. So, super dense steam will go in the first turbine, and the setup is gonna be the same for every reactor that we have made on the channel. So, first turbine set to super dense steam, from that coming out, we have dense steam, which goes in the second turbine and comes out normal steam which goes in the third turbine and that normal steam gets converted into low pressure steam and as we are not going to produce a lot of it i'm going to use a simple condenser not even an auxiliary cooling tower a simple condenser which can process up to 2000 millibuckets per second of low pressure steam but we are going to be well below that number so placing down a single condenser one side of it is low pressure steam the other side is going to be water and that's it, that's all of the connections done. And with that, we have made a loop of water for our Xenox reactor. Filling the reactor up with water, it will show up in the gauge level, just like how it did with the carbon dioxide. And now to craft the fuel rods, you will need zirconium splinters along with a beryllium ingot. Both of these can be produced by our bedrock ore setup. I'm gonna show you how later on in the video. Also, this setup will produce fuel like uranium and thorium so yeah combining billets of these materials with the empty fuel rod will give us the xernox fuel rod so we are going to use the natural uranium fuel rod here as it is going to be the first fuel rod that you can craft easily without even processing uranium further so natural uranium is just uranium billets with empty fuel rod fill up all 24 of them and now we can start the reactor because we have co2 and water in it so there is no control rod or anything like it, just turning on the button will increase the pressure and temperature and we will start producing steam and power, which is gonna be constant. It doesn't fluctuate like the RPM jetters. So yeah, right now 700 millibuckets per second of uh, super dense steam we are producing and connecting all of the turbines to a single grid. We can see how much power we are getting. So as it's natural uranium, we are not going to get out a lot of power, 166. But now let me show you how the CO2 level works. So heat, uh, temperature and pressure, you need to balance them out uh, by basically fluctuating the amount of CO2 in the reactor. 
So if I vent out some of the CO2 by clicking on this valve here, then you will see that the pressure drops, but temperature goes up and we are producing more steam now. So if I do that once more, the level of CO2 will be down to 14,000 millibuckets per second. Sorry, 14,000 millibuckets, but we are producing much more steam now. So from 166, we went to 190,000 HG per sec. So that is how you can basically uh, balance these things out or maximize the amount of power that you're producing. But do remember, if you have like very little CO2, then this reactor can go pretty hot and it will explode. So make sure you don't vent all of the CO2 out and have some in order to maximize it according to the fuel that you are using. So once again, I'm gonna get, go back to 14,000 millibuckets, which is the perfect level for natural uranium. And it will give us around 190,000 HE per second. Now let's talk about breeding fuel rods. So thorium-232 can be made into thorium fuel rods. And thorium is once again produced from actinide bedrock ore. Now for breeding, you want to keep the fuel rod in the middle as that is where the maximum flux is gonna be so the outer fuel rods they deplete slower than the inner fuel rods and basically the central fuel rods they deplete the fastest so uh, i think it took around five and a half minutes in order for these thorium 232 rods in order to completely deplete i'm going to speed this video up right now and once the depletion level hits 100 percent these fuel rods will convert into thorium fuel rods and they'll start reacting instantly and we'll see a bump up in power. So here goes, as soon as it's depleted, there, it converts into Xernox thorium fuel rod and this gives us a nice bump in power and it will take us to roughly 200,000 HG per second. So yeah, before when we replaced these fuel rods, we were down to 128,000. Right now we are nearly to 200,000 HG per second. So that is how you can breed fuel rods or thorium, especially in the Xenox reactor. You can also do the same for lithium, which can be converted into tritium. So that's a cheap way to get tritium in the Xenox reactor. Now, once these fuel rods are depleted, you can get the hot uh, fuel out of them the hot depleted fuel and then you can recycle it in a centrifuge so with natural uranium the best part is you get out uh, reactor grade plutonium which can be used to make plutonium fuel rods which is much powerful than the uranium variant of it so yeah make sure to have some spent fuel pool drums each one can take in 12 uh, fuel rods and we have 24 in total so two should do the trick and finally now i want to give you an overview of this bedrock ore setup that i have here so we have no use of the light metal bedrock ore and the crystalline bedrock ore. Aside from that, the rare earth metal ore. We don't have any need for cobalt, but the rare earth ore chunks will give us powder of boron along with zirconium splinters. Now we move on to the other bedrock ore types, like for example, the heavy metal one, non-metal and actinide. So we have actinide bedrock ore which will give us thorium and uranium when processed and uh, as for the non-metal one it will give us coal and sulfur now sulfur is useful as it can be used to make sulfuric acid and heavy metal ore when processed in sulfuric acid as a byproduct it will give us beryllium now if you remember zirconium splinters and beryllium are used to make the zirconium fuel rods so we have everything that we need in this one bedrock ore setup here. Let me know if you want to see this whole process in detail, if you want to make this thing, I'll make a separate video for it. So anyways, our reactor is actually performed well with 200,000 HE per seconds nearly being produced. And I'm just gonna cover the entire reactor up in fans. So in my old video, the steam type was dense steam and now it's been converted to super dense steam that is the one problem that everyone was facing their reactors were exploding because it was the wrong steam type but then again the mod updated i can't really do anything about that when a mod update comes so anyways i found i hope you guys found this video helpful and you learned something from it if you did do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this now if you have any questions regarding this video or this reactor let me know in the comment section down below i'll see you guys next time until then peace out and stay safe